It's August, and in typical fashion, it's time for us to check in with the progress of the GPU market and how it compares to last month's prices. Recently, GPU prices have been hard to predict, as sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down. But this month is actually a pretty mixed bag, with the prices doing exactly that, with some improvements, some staying exactly where they were before, and some actually skyrocketing in price. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hey mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. So as usual, a little bit of housekeeping to start, but if you're a dedicated viewer here on eTechnics and you've seen one of our GPU pricing videos before, thank you. And then you also know how we do things. But for those of you who aren't, let's quickly recap. Over the last couple of years, GPU prices saw some pretty big hikes with stock being the main issue. Also crypto kind of screwing everything up among other things and greed for retailers and distributors adding another kind of element into the mix. Luckily, things are starting to look better overall and every month or so we take a look at how things compare in an aim to show you the best deals around in both the US and the UK on both AMD and Nvidia cards. Now, for those wondering, we will be adding Intel at a later date as they become more popular. But for now, you can go and check out our Intel driver analysis if you want to see some content on the art cards. Now, in order to make sure you as a consumer get the best deal you can, we spend a lot of time focusing on the cheapest card per range to give you kind of a good estimate of what you'd be expected to pay for the cards you're actually eager to buy. However, it is a bit of a given that buying a custom AIB card that's pre-factory overclocked or has a beefier cooler will be priced higher. So if you're looking for a Strix, Supreme X or Aorus Extreme or one of the more premium cards, then it is to be expected that you'll have to pay more. But like I said, for the purposes of this video, we try to focus kind of on the cheapest option available where possible. Now also, if you need help with anything, then we do always have our amazing friendly Discord server, where we'll be more than happy to help guide you through what's available, what's right for you and what your hard earned cash should be spent on. Also, if you love gaming and appreciate the huge amounts of hard work that me and the team put into these GPU pricing videos, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a ton of cool goodies, including monthly live Q&A sessions, exclusive behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, meetups, and so much more. The link for all that amazing, wonderful stuff is as always down below. Now, just like last kind of month's video, we will be showing you some updated charts with the pricing data from 2022 all the way up to the current day. So this way you can clearly see the prices dropping or rising as the months go on. And while we are looking at both UK and US pricing, we'll also make sure we timestamp the video so it just allows you to kind of help find exactly what you're looking for. So let's jump straight into the charts and see how prices are for the month of August. So first off, we're taking a look at the UK with the older generation of cards with the 16 and 20 series. And straight away, we can see the 2060 Super has stayed the same price since July. We can also see the 2060 Super's little brothers, the 2060 six gig and 12 gig, now meeting at a very similar price at around 270 pounds. With the 12 gig dropping from 319 pounds and the six gig increasing from 231 pounds, so basically for better performance for around the same price, you'd actually be better off sticking with the 12 gig. Then finally, the GTX 1650 Super, which has been following a pattern of increasing and then decreasing as the months go on, it has now continued this with the price dropping closer to 200 pounds. Moving on to the 30 series cards, and we can see that a lot of the cards have decreased in price this month, with the RTX 3090 being the most dramatic in the chart, dropping from 2,034 pounds all the way down to 1,261 pounds. A similar thing can be said for the 3080 Ti and the 3080 12 gig, with them both decreasing and the other 30 series cards in the stack all staying around a similar price, leaving them at the same place as they were in July. So now moving on to the all important 40 series, and there is well, less to look at here, with the prices all generally staying around the same. 
There are gradual decreases with the 4090 and the 4080, which is nice to see as these are the most sought after cards at the top of the stack. But if you're looking for a slightly less beefy 40 series card, you'll be happy to see that they also have decreased since last month with the exception of the RTX 4060. But with the general distaste towards the 4060 from the consumer base, I feel like that one is slightly irrelevant anyway. But if you are one of the few that are interested in this card, then feel free to check out our range of content we've recently looked at with it. Moving on to AMD and starting with the 6000 series, we can see that similar to Nvidia's 40 series, the 6000 series cards are staying around the same price this month, with only a few changes. The biggest change we see is the RX 6600 XT, which shot down in price since July, leaving it at £302. On the other hand, the RX 6950 XT has seen a slight increase this month for the first time since May. It is still priced below its little brother, the RX 6900 XT, so for less money you're actually getting even better performance. And finally, for the UK, we're looking at the 7000 series cards with the RX 7600, RX 7900 XT and the RX 7900 XTX. Now, similar to the 40 series, we see that there isn't much to compare as there is a limited amount of models in this series and they haven't been out that long. However, we can see that the prices still reflect performance, with the 7900 XTX being the most powerful and still coming out the most expensive. It has, however, seen a significant price drop since July and is now sitting at 899.99. In comparison to the RTX 4090 coming in at £1,500 this month, you'd be saving a hell of a lot of cash if you were to choose AMD's top performing card, but you would be missing out on the better ray tracing performance, so that's definitely something you'll have to consider. Now hopping over the pond and looking at the US market, and we can see that their prices are a little bit more chaotic than the UK, with the prices pretty much fluctuating all over. Starting with the 16 and 20 series Nvidia cards, and we see that the 2060 12 gig is the only card that has stayed the same as last month, with no difference to its cost. The other cards, however, tell a completely different story. The 1650 Super, 1660 Super, and the 1660 Ti all have shot up in price, all increasing by around $50, which might not mean a lot to some people, but if you're looking at one of these cards and can hold out just a little bit longer, then you may be able to save some money when the prices hopefully go back to how they were in previous months, leaving you with some extra spending money to maybe put towards other areas of your system. Looking at the 30 series cards, we can see that some of the higher end cards in the stack are slowly rising back up in price, like the 3080 12 gig and RTX 3090 Ti, whilst the lower end of the stack looks to be maintaining its pricing since last month. When looking at the 3090 Ti and the 3080 Ti, there are some cheaper options out there, but they are either open boxed or refurbished cards. So that would have to be something you, you know, would consider yourself if you're looking at these, but can't warrant spending the full price for a new one. Also, the fact that the RTX 3090 Ti actually comes in more expensive than the RTX 4080 this month, it sort of makes itself kind of redundant as you can get a newer and better performing card that's also more efficient for less cost. The 40 series as a whole hasn't seen much movement, which I kind of find a little bit strange as people haven't been snatching them up as much as they were at launch. So I guess I'd expect in the future these cards will have to see a price change in kind of order to adjust for that. Now the RTX 4090 has dropped a small amount, but nowhere near as much as we saw it do in May. So if your heart is set on the RTX 4090, then well, I'd maybe wait a little bit and see if it goes down in price again, like we saw a few months ago. Now looking at the 6000 series, and we can see that a lot of the stack has stayed around the same with kind of small changes here and there. However, that can't be said for others. The first example is that of the RX 6900 XT. This card has dropped significantly since July, where it was the most expensive we've seen since MSRP. Now, although it has dropped by over $100, it is still more expensive than its bigger brother, the RX 6950 XT, which has seen a slight price increase, but is still well below where it was last year. So you could get a more powerful card for a fraction of the cost, meaning, well, it's a no-brainer, really. Some of the lower end cards have had small price increases, such as the RX 6600 XT and non-XT versions, but with more powerful cards from both AMD and Nvidia being similar prices, these cards have become a little bit redundant as well, unless it's specifically what you're looking for. Last but not least, the 7000 series cards. Looking at the chart, we can see that the RX 7900 XT and XTX variants have both gone up in price by around $50. But for these being AMD's most powerful cards, it is, I guess, to a degree to be expected. It's still not a huge blow for these cards as you do get what you pay for and they are still sitting below their MSRP. But we always like seeing the price going down when making these videos. So hopefully they do begin to drop again soon. Now with the RX 7600 only being released in May this year, there isn't really a lot to compare it to other than its launch price of $269. 
in which it has stayed the same since, but as I mentioned last month, the card hasn't proven to be massively popular with consumers, so I'd still expect it to start to drop in the very near future. So there we have it. Hopefully this has given you an idea on kind of what's been happening in the GPU market for the last month and what to maybe expect in the future. Safe to say that not a lot has really changed. Some cards have gone up and some have gone down, but the majority have stayed exactly or at least close to what they were in July. Although there are some definite deals to be had if you're not looking for a very specific card, as we're still at a point where you may not get the exact model that you're after, but similar models you know, will be available. And like I've said before, that's really just down to a general stock supply issue, which by the looks of things has been getting better and will hopefully continue to get better as we move further into 2023. Now, if you are based in the UK, we do actually have a dedicated deals group on Facebook specifically focused on kind of finding the very best deals on the market. And I will link that down below for you to join as well. We are also working on a dedicated website for that and then obviously doing it in the US market as well. So lots of cool stuff coming there. Now, if you do find yourself stuck wading through the endless pit of GPUs, again, I'd invite you to check out our Discord. The link is down below and we'll be more than happy to help guide you in the right direction so you can get the perfect GPU that you've been hunting for. While waiting could see you I don't know, maybe scoring a better deal and saving some cash, there's always the fear that something goes wrong and prices start to rise again. So it's really up to you and how, I guess, desperate you are for that new card. So yeah, that about wraps things up. Hopefully, I don't know, this has helped you and given you an idea as to what's available in both the UK and the US and for both AMD and Nvidia. And while we do want to, as I mentioned, include Intel in the future, there just isn't much point at the moment due to there only really being a few models available. But if you guys want to see that, it's definitely something we'll consider. So make your voices known in the comments section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And as mentioned, if you love what we do and appreciate the huge amounts of hard work that goes into our videos, then you can help support us through Patreon, where you get all those kind of amazing benefits. And it does also help us out like you wouldn't believe. The link for that is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.